this week you have rip and i we're getting into the fourth quarter of life and uh, we'll talk about what's in store for the holiday season what's store in store for the podcast catch up on things that are difficult daylight savings apparently difficult not even gonna do a real intro rip go ahead you want to do a 500 level you want to hit him with a cj stroud 500 level Trying to digest that fourth quarter of life comment here. You got me a little scared, DK. Uh, yeah, as always, man, this episode is brought to you by 500 Level. It's 500level.com for all the hottest t-shirts in the game. CJ Stroud, DK, the best quarterback in the 2023 draft class. 40 different t-shirts on 500 Level. Our guy K1, Kyler Murray, coming back this week. Go grab a Kyler Murray big head shirt at 500level.com. Use the discount code One Star at checkout for 20% off everything on the site. Let's go. Yo, yo, yo. Daylight savings is really... Was I completely wrong when I remember seeing this on a ballot maybe last year or two years ago? Did I hallucinate all of that? I think it's been on every ballot for the last 40 years. I feel like it's uh, yeah, it's it's something that it's talked about twice a year. They're going to eliminate it. They're going to make it permanent. I can't keep it straight, DK. All I know is I was a half hour late for this recording because I fucked up. I forgot Hawaii, like Arizona doesn't observe it, man. My yep. apologies. I mean, I believe it was something put in place for like the farmers, but the farmers don't even care. It takes daylight away so what happened is it did it did we did a vote a federal vote it went to the u.s senate and they passed the legislation and then something something killed it these bills and these in these senates and these houses and it's messing everybody up i think like more more than ever before in the history of life even though everything is digital now more problems with daylight savings and scheduling than i remember like before all this technology maybe maybe it's life's gotten more scheduled or whatever uh seems like it's throwing a loophole though curveball all i know is my kids are getting up at 6 a.m it's fucking dark at like 4 40 i mean stuff is now supposed to make life easier dk this just makes it more confusing more ridiculous let's just keep stuff the same at this point for christ's sake the same watch the animals the animals will tell you the animals still are going to go want their food at the time because their bodies are on animal time not made up human time it's crazy knock it off lawmakers I'm gonna, I'm gonna write my assemblyman. Actually, we're cool. We're cool in Hawaii. We we don't we don't do it. It's the rest of the country rip. But I'm not mad. I'm not mad at you. It's totally okay. I think it's happening all over the country right now. So give your take take a load off. Relax. Daylight savings. It's a mistake of the bureaucrats. Not your fault that you're late to your Zoom appointment. Thank you, man. So I'm still sorry. I pride myself on being on time. And, uh, you know, yeah, the bureaucrats got all, us good. All, all messed up. All good. I still love you, bro. Fourth quarter of life. I did say that comment. That is a scary comment if you pretext it in life. I'm meaning in fourth quarter. And I said this last year, just in life of the year. And this is using man's clock, not animal's clock. Once again, I'm sipping the Kool-Aid. I'm back on the bureaucrat shit. But fourth quarter of life, meaning we realistically have what? one two and a half weeks until thanksgiving and then everything shuts down nobody really works december really hollywood your whole southern california people start chilling it's a relaxing time that's what i meant by fourth quarter of life just say fourth quarter of the year you're, you're confusing thing you're like the daylight savings of a, a podcast host here fourth quarter of the year come on dk we know what you mean yeah because that could be taken seriously fourth quarter of, of life it's very serious fourth quarter of of the year very um exciting or not who knows exciting for me i got invited to a thanksgiving so i no longer i've been doing for three years uh trying to do thanksgiving a miniature thanksgiving because i don't have the type of friends it's crazy when i see people invite 35 40 people over it's nuts you even have that many friends good for you but i got invited to a party i got excited responsible for pie actually they threw out it's a potluck you know, a, a smorgas a smorgasbord, some people call it. And they threw out a text and said, "You can pick your pick your dish you want to bring." You know, it's kind of like a fantasy draft that hits immediately. You know, you got to gather with your team, my GM, my wife. We got somebody in town, so I got a I got a specialist in town. You know, an offensive specialist. Our friend Alyssa, her daughter Bella, she's a great chef. So we put together our list and we decided we want to do the sweet potatoes with marshmallow a little brown sugar classic kind of easy maybe a cop-out 
And uh, we threw that one out there, got denied, already picked up, didn't pay enough on the waiver wire. Somebody paid seven bucks and got it. I only put up five bucks. Was this a, was this an email or a text that you're responding to? Like first Just, one to respond? There was a middleman. So it was, it's early in the, in the, in the Thanksgiving draft league. This is my first Thanksgiving with them. So I don't know how the league operates. So I don't know how it works. So first round drafts gone. We have to do another one immediately. So the, that's when the pie came up. I said, how about pie? And he said, well, you know, it's, pie is kind of like an add on. It's like a kicker or a defense. It's not something you want to draft first. You bring a pie if you want, you know, type of thing. So it's not a, it can't be a second round pick. That's like draft. That's like picking up Billy Grammatica in the second round. So you don't do that. So I got my team back together. We want to do something a little different. We're new. So we want to stand out a little. Do we want to stand out to this Thanksgiving party? This is our first invite. I don't want to be disrespectful to the host. So we, we, we put our heads together. A couple ideas came back that were innovative. There's a savory cupcake that came to light, came to fruition. Definitely not a second round draft pick. But it's kind of it's stuffing with cranberry sauce as the second layer, and then topped with mashed potatoes to look like the icing. Not bad. I'd probably grab one. If they look good. It would really look like cupcakes. And I said, no, it's too much. I don't want to risk it on this. So we went back to macaroni and cheese. It got accepted. So we're macaroni and cheese, second round pick. We're going in and we're going to blow their socks off. We might spice it up a little bit. We might put Gruyere. Or white or Vermont white cheddar, if it's on sale, we'll have to see if we get a little bit closer. And then pie, we threw it out to the atmosphere, you know, on my exercise, on my exercise takes. And uh, man, people are not cool with switching up the normal pumpkin pie in this world. So we're gonna go with traditional pumpkin pie and macaroni and cheese. I'm excited. Any questions, Rip? Are you gonna make the pie? Are you going to make the pumpkin pie yourself or are you, are you buying store? No, no, no. You pick it up. And if you've ever, if people have been to Hawaii, no. Hawaii does poke amazingly. Uh, all, 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 the, all the fishes that you can get that are fresh, but the macadamia and encrusted fish, get it. It's, it's a must hit. And then people who know, know you also got to get pies here. Hawaiians love pies. They do pies amazingly, savory and sweet, but sweet in particular. And uh, it's just always every little town that you go to in, in Hawaii, whatever island that you're on, you're going to find a pie shop. So there's one right here in my little town, Kalaheo, the right slice. And they do that. They do the uh, I put it on our Twitter. They do a five or six different pie selection and you can pick some traditional, some more local. We love my house loves the Haupia pie. You ever heard of Haupia? I haven't. They they have it at Costco. I haven't heard of it if they don't have no, it at Costco. No, no, it's a regional delight, man. If you know, you know. If you don't know, you don't know. It's um essentially it's like a coconut based uh gelatin kind of in the middle. The first layer is a sweet potato, purple a purple sweet potato. So it's pureed and mixed with sugar, sweet and delicious. Then you have this kind of gelatin flavored, delicious coconut milk middle. And then it's topped with a lovely a lovely cream. It's just a great fucking pie. It's a great local pie. It's kind of, it's not too sweet. It's great, but, but no, 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 no. We want to go with the, with the pumpkin pie. That's the excitement of my life. This is three years of not being invited to a Thanksgiving and now we're invited and I'm showing up and I'm going to, we're planning on knocking out of the, out, 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 out of the park with our food selection and our company. Okay. Rip. So excitement level is high. What are you doing? What are, are you hosting or are you guesting? This year's gonna be a little different for me because I think we're just gonna go out to lunch with uh, my grandmother in law. She's ninety two, I think. So there, yeah, there's no hosting. There's no big meal this year. I think we're gonna have the brunch the morning after. But uh, yeah, we're like we're going camping for a couple days before, and we check out on the morning of Thanksgiving. So it's gonna be totally different, man. I gotta find a place to watch NFL on Thanksgiving Day, possibly a, a sports bar that's open somewhere in uh, Central California. I'll be up there. So it's gonna be a little different this year. What well, you've overcame? Congratulations in life. You've overcame the trap of traditional shit. You're doing a, very unique camping, and then day of. There's probably some value in there. And uh, shit, congratulations on having a 92 year old mother and, and grandmother in law still alive man give that woman a hug give her a give her a, a, a cigar like the raiders locker room yeah no i'm looking forward to it. it's gonna be a great thanksgiving uh I'd, l- I'd love to have some hawaiian pumpkin pie though it's pumpkin pie's top three for me of, of any season the whole year pumpkin pie's top three 
Uh, my only point of reference for everything in life is, is what I mentioned is Costco. And I know they have a giant pumpkin pie that serves like 10 people for like eight ninety nine. What uh, what are the what's what's the one out on Kauai look like, and how much are we dropping per pie? Is it like thirty dollars for four pieces? It's a great pumpkin pie, that Costco one, huh? I mean, a real fat person move if you have a lonely Thanksgiving, and it's okay too. Not even a fat person, but a lonely Thanksgiving move. Get that Costco pumpkin pie and some Cool Whip, some Cool Whip. Eat the whole fucking pie. Cool just, whip, vanilla ice cream, yeah, just do it all for it's, yourself. And for eight eight ninety nine, I mean, it's just a real, just own it. Thanksgiving to yourself, Thanksgiving to your diabetes, but not. I can't do. You can't bring a Costco pie, bro, to the. No, I like I'm, it. I'm not, I like I'm not it. saying you should do that. I'm just, I'm just. You're throwing about... it out there. Yeah, some options. No, that's artisan, man. This shit is artisan. This is fucking forty nine dollar pies, man. This shit is shit. class act, rip. It's probably it together. What, eight eight small slices for for fifty bucks. You know, we'll have to see the sizes. I'm not sure. Usually in Hawaii, things are a little bit bigger, a little larger. You should, uh, if you really want to go outside the box, you should just bring some some jungle juice to the to the party. Just like unannounced, sight unseen, just show yeah. up with jungle juice. People it's funny that, well, as things come back into flavor. So now this is the point where people aren't partying anymore. But if you bring back a relic from their past, like a jungle juice... And yeah, it, it make, actually like the the taste, the sweetness of the jungle juice mixed with the the savory of the stuffing and the turkey, like it actually goes pretty well. So I highly recommend jungle juice. Oh, you've done it before? No, but it, I'm just thinking about it right now, and I'm just thinking I'd love to have jungle juice right after uh, turkey and stuffing and mashed potatoes. You love that, huh? Alcoholic move, major alcoholic move. Make the Jello with jungle juice. How about that? Jello. Trick question. You can't. Some people do Jello for Thanksgiving or cranberry sauce. The same thing. <laughs> I fucking love Thanksgiving. But we got the rest of the year going for the pod. We're going to probably take a couple weeks off for the holidays. After that Maui fire, we took a little bit of time off. And I think Rip, Rip realized that we can and it is a little bit better for the show to sit back and we can work on getting some things put together. So, you know, moving forward, things are a little bit smoother. And uh, so listeners can look forward to that. Some free weeks to go expand your mind. Read a fucking book a little bit. Uh, we got Nick B getting pumped for next year. We're going to get him back out to that waste management. I got to get a trip to Arizona on the books. When are Maybe. you in Arizona next, Rip? Maybe waste management me- weekend. Maybe we'll we'll all hit it up together. Who knows? But it's also Super Bowl weekend, so I don't know if I could do that. Super Bowl weekend is the second week of February. It's always a good time in Arizona. It's the best time of year. It's, but it might be too much for me going on then. I, I, I got to figure it out. There's, uh, I got my pops in a great situation where... I've I've done the unthinkable with my father and I've gotten the, the the a wonderful person to come weekly and just hang out with them. We're going into week number four. This the wonderful caretaker. And my dad just needs help with little things. Or he's 83, so he's not as old as your step grandmother in law going to Marie Calendars. She's probably gonna order a pot pie at 93, because you don't give a shit no more. 93. I want to prepare my pops for 93. So we're slowly introducing people who can help. My sister's in New York. I'm in Hawaii. It's not as easy to help with things like I got to take the cat to the vet or uh, I need to I'll go pick up a prescription or one of those things. Breaking news in that movement. My dad, after three weeks of just meeting in the courtyard, he's allowed this woman to come in the house and, ex- and, and, and explore some things that might need help with. So I'm feeling like crown me the king of, son- of the sons right now. Like I'm a son delegator. I'm, this is like a whole new job that I'm 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 gonna put this on my LinkedIn page at this point in time if it continues to work out. There's literally a dining room in my pops' house that I have not seen the di- the table part of the table in about 10 years. So I'm hoping this little push right here can turn the tides of my Arizona trips. If I can actually have a place to sit down, do a little bit of work, we're hoping and praying we can actually this man has been living life until 2023 here. No internet connection, no modem at the house, bro. Very difficult to spend two or three days. You'd like to unplug. It's just not as realistic as you think. So, uh, and I'm ho- also probably not, like my pops has never listened to an episode of One Star. I'm sure 170 episodes in, neither of our fathers have have listened to one. I'm I'm pretty sure. I mean, my my pops was balls deep in that Chris Heron episode. Just kidding, just kidding. Yeah, no support of the podcast. 
I'm going to get him, though. He's waiting for a Rutgers athlete to be brought on the show. Greg Schiano, maybe. That would get my pops involved. I know there's no famous gold panners, Rips. The listeners, Rips Dad's an actual well-known gold panner in the south of Utah, north of Nevada. If you ask about, you know, Rip, they know about him. They know about your donut eating charades, too, in that part of town. Actually, I have some questions. You know what I actually have, bro? This is, this is just a throwaway episode anyway. Shout out to our guy, Seymour. Shout out to our regulars, Saparito, Tim in North North Carolina. Episodes for you guys, because to be honest, the Daylight Savings fucked this whole thing up, bro. Let, let, let's mix it up. Let's just do uh, one star moments of the week and Rex of the week right now in the middle of the show. Like you said, it's uh, yeah, it's it makes a show. Well, I have a couple. I have a couple of questions that I we've been tabling. They came in from listeners. Let me pull these up. I just threw them in a doc as they came in over the last three months. Yeah, here. here's one. Oh, this is good. It's a homeowner question. It's a life question. Where was this? Oh, this is good. Life, life info. Okay, yo, DK and Rip. I know you are both homeowners. Congrats. I'm 26 years old and want to buy a house. Got a decent nine to five and been living with my parents to save money. I've saved 12K, which to be honest, was hard as hell. It's crazy to think that people have to save $200,000 to live in this state, California in parentheses. Anyway, I live in Sacramento and want to buy a house in Vacaville. Ah, Vacaville. Home of the Jelly Belly Factory. Listeners, Vacaville. Great place. Take that, take that ass to Vacaville. Take that ass to Vacaville. Uh, houses are going for 600 to 800K. Is buying a house still worth it at these prices and these interest rates, or should I wait for one or both to go down? Vic in Sacramento. Yeah, I saw a headline the other day. There's never been a better time to be a renter than a homeowner right now. Interest rates are 8%. Uh, housing housing prices are exorbitant. I say, man, if you can, shit, move back in with your parents, save up all your money, save it up, save it up for when the when the rates go down, when the housing prices go down a little bit, then be ready to pounce. I mean, you need you need you need at least 100k for a down payment at this point. Uh even in Vacaville, man. Who would have thought? As homeowners too, it's scary cuz you're like, shit, cuz you, you is my going to go down, you know? So you start thinking of this is the peak for me and then you start thinking of all that shit. Yeah. It's a I had the same conversation in my house recently. We'd lost our house in the fire. There's still a lot of finances that have to go towards it. The question was like, what should we do the next? We're breaking our lives up into three months at this time, quarters. That's why I mentioned quarters at the beginning of the pod. Same thing. Should we rent or should we buy? A, a clear, easy thing is to rent. The next caveat for me is if I'm going to rent, I'm going to rent in interesting houses and interesting places that add to the creativity and spice of life. That would be my side caveat of if you rent. The concept of renting uh, an apartment just to have an apartment in a normal place and you could save the money at your parents' house. Granted, you could keep dealing with that. It's a long time to live with your parents at, what do we got? Vic in Sacramento, 26 years old. And a lot depends on your personal life too. It's a, it's a tough question though, Rip. Shit. Well, as an alternative, you could also you could also squat, be a squatter at this point, DK. It's so hard. Oh, I hate that. To, I hate to kick that. people out and evict people. I just saw a headline that a woman was squatting for like 547 days and finally left the place. But that woman saved probably 50 grand in rent. Why not do it? Take advantage of this stuff. You have to have a high pain threshold to just deal with people hating you for a long time to sit in a house that's like that ain't shit ain't living life to either you have that to be a one, one star person for sure oh worst know. personality zero star personality to even think about getting into that game but this california being a landlord is, is not easy uh it's not i you got to wait it out though you got to wait it out for like like vic said one or two of those things to fall or start looking at other states or take this opportunity to take what do you got saved? What do you have saved? Rip twelve thousand bucks. Take twenty five hundred bucks and go travel. Maybe go to Thailand, live all a little our, bit. All our realtor, all our realtor friends and listeners are, are probably killing us right now because they want everyone to buy all the time. So apologies. The only Stanga. reason you can buy right now, Rip, is if you have the cash. And the only motivator that I see people coming out with cash to buy with is if the prices go down, and that would affect me and you and our equity. It's tough. It's tough. We'll see. Big, we'll see. I'm going to be waiting on the sidelines. I might put together a little bit of cash just in case an opportunity shows its face, uh, but very, very tough. The flip side of it, you could take that same 12K Vic and you could throw it on the, throw it into some stocks, not some stocks, but just pick a, a mutual fund or whatever, throw some stocks. It should kick back. What do they say? Six to 8%. 
lots of decisions to be made. In the meantime, don't spend your money on stupid shit. Very good job saving 10K. It is so hard to save. It's so hard to save. You know, especially this day and age. Where are people getting all this extra fucking money? Every airport I go to, every restaurant, all the roads packed, bro. <laughs> Sound like my dad, curmudgeon at this point in time. I got some other ones. Oh, here, this is an older one, but said, Rip, what's the follow up on the donut eating competition? Are there any more comps? That video, oh, that video might have been the worst filmed video and produced video ever put on Instagram. How much love money is left on the donut pass? One stars for life, Joey. Yeah, I got the the pink box donut card sitting on my dresser. It's uh, it was a three hundred dollar gift card. I made a stop in Utah, a stop in uh, Vegas, and I, I think I'm I think I'm down like one hundred and eighty bucks on it. Bought donuts for almost my entire street on my road trip a couple months ago. Uh, so yeah, next time I'm in Vegas or Utah, that thing's getting used again. But honestly, on the eating thing, I've had a, a lot of questions about whether I'm gonna quit my job and become a professional eater, or you know whether I'm gonna seek these things out, but. You know, I, uh, I'm going to let it kind of fall how it did in Laughlin, man. I was right place at the right time. I, I was afforded the opportunity. If it happens again, it happens again. If it doesn't, it doesn't. I have no problem, DK, going out on top, retiring from eating contests as a, as a champion, 1-0 and undefeated. Uh, not many people get to do that, go out on their own terms. But, hey, if, if I'm in the right place at the right time again, I might be open to it. I'll tell you that much. Next time, listeners, you're in Vegas, hit us on Instagram or Twitter. Just let us know you're in Vegas. And let us know that you like donuts. Possibly, you might get a donut delivery to your room. All right, but you got to be in the in, in the city of Vegas or Laughlin. It's the you got to be in like the same hotel as me, and probably like within a couple floors because I'm not going to go too far. Let's be honest. Yeah, we're not going. Yeah, exactly. Rip the fucking daylight savings. What are we doing here? We're just trying to trying to live our lives. One more. This is, oh, this is a good one because Little League should be wrapping up. You guys still, still Little Leaguing, or is that wrapped up? That shit's done by Halloween. Fall ball, fall ball is over uh, this weekend. Actually, ten game season, nine and zero right now. So we got one more to. to oh, you're nine and zero. Good. So this question aligns to you then. Good. He's nine and zero. Look at that, big success. Uh, great pod, fellas. Thirty three years old. Follow little little league manager with eight year olds. Rip, how is your one handed ground ball technique when you throw the ball up and hit it to hit ground balls? That is actually very strong move. If you can master that one, you got that shit in your bag. That's a great question because about three weeks ago, we had a situation where we had to do that in a practice and, and the, the head coach called me. I'm one of the three assistants and he called me, asked me if I wanted to do it. And I said, sure. I hadn't done it in years and years. I mean, shit, I hadn't done it in probably 15 years. So I had no idea. I was nervous. I thought I was going to swing and miss a bunch. And I had my kid's bat. So it's an extremely small bat. But it's man, always a small bat. Uh, yeah, no, but I mean, it wasn't an adult bat. It's a kid's bat. And it, dude, I'll tell you what, I knocked it out of the park, DK. I was accurate. I, I never swung and missed. I hit a couple like pop-ups or, or foul balls, but it was basically 98% accuracy hitting it where I wanted it uh, and the level of, of uh, force, which I wanted it, you know, hard ground balls. It was like a natural. Ball. You didn't have not one misstep in what, 30 ground balls? You went 30 for 30? Probably 29 for 30, but I was so happy with it because I was extremely nervous. It was the key to success. You choke up, choke up on that chicken? No, I think it's just hand-eye coordination. I, I got, I, I'm pretty good just from spending uh, thousands of hours playing Tech Mobile growing up. So I, I think it's still there for me. They put, so you now, are you now the ground, the ground ball hitter? Every coaching staff in Little League needs to develop who that is. I am. And now like going forward, I know that I can do it. So I'll actually step up and volunteer to do it because I, I won't be uh, nervous anymore. I'm right. Quick follow up question. This is a little bit in the weeds, but I didn't shit. I don't know you were nine and zero, so I guess it should it applies. Uh, we just let the kids play. It's chaos, but I've been able to develop a couple of ways to to actually score runs and develop runs using the actually talented kids on my team. Do you have a special play, or do you have a way to secretly score runs that the team doesn't know about? I mean, it depends what level you're at. I mean, this person's eight year olds. Sounds, okay, eight year olds. All right, there you go. That's right up there. I mean, right now it's the first experience for all these kids of, of hitting against actual kids. Instead Wait, Rip, of you know, like you know, like Kevin's actually has talent, and Kevin and Jake actually are talented. The rest is trash. So you, 
you adjust the field, you put them in your batting order different. You no, no, make- it's way more simple than that. It's just being aggressive on the base path. It's it's every probably fifty percent of the pitches go oh, past that the catcher. Spooks, that spooks the field when kids are aggressive. And on the it's base just path. it's just taking those extra inches and opportunities when you get them. I mean, we send every pass ball. We're sending the runner on, on to get a stolen base. So. You know, there's always a guy at third. Aggressive. Or, yeah, it's being aggressive. You're and, like the uh, Lou Pinella. You're like the you, Lou Pinella of, uh, dang, bro. Okay, so that's what you're doing. You're getting your best player out there, and then you're every time opportunity to grab a bag, you're grabbing an inch. You're not taking it one of easy. our kids had one of our kids has 22 stolen bases in in nine games. It's unbelievable. Like we're we're like the diamond bag. We're just stealing bases left and right. You're gonna get called out at the end of the season meeting, I think, for going too hard on the base path. Possibly, but I'm not the head coach, so I won't take that. You teach your kids the the, the head first slide or the foot first slide. We had a kid that tried to slide head first into first base the other day, and it got immediately got called out because apparently it's a no no. Some of these rules, I didn't even know these rules, but yeah, you got you got to go feet first at this level. Dangerous. I, if you were going to be so aggressive, I don't know. You got you were, you have some some Ricky Hendersons on the team. You know, maybe a fun thing for the last game of the season. Bring some. Uh, Go to your kitchen and get some of your cooking mitts and let them put them on their hands right before they do their head first slide. Last game of the season. Cooking mitt. They have sliding pads now, DK. It's 2023. All these kids have these things. It's unbelievable. They look like cooking mitts. Am I wrong? Yeah. I mean, if you that's a, that's a one star sliding pad. If you bring a, a cooking mitt from your ha- from your kitchen to an actual Little League game. Embarrassing. You got money now. You're in that money league now in California. It's not like us growing up. Some of my coaches, man, Keith Finkel's dad, he would have bought it, brought it from his damn kitchen. Keith Finkel's dad was damn good at hitting those ground bells, man. Very important to Keith Finkel's dad's uh, success, Gus Finkel. Uh, I think we went 9-1 and one once, Tempe Little League. Very consistently wearing those. I don't even know what type of fabric they are, but those red kind of PE teacher shorts that Little League coaches wear. I mean, you got to get a pair of those to be successful. I don't even know what they make those anymore. I mean, at this point, it's all like Nike and Under Armour. They, they, you got to go to a thrift store to find those. Yeah, the people who remember those, I don't remember. But I, we used to have a PE coach, Coach Lee, man. He would wear them. They were kind of like in between a towel and a vinyl record. You know, It's like, it's like that movie uh, Dodgeball with, with Will Ferrell. It's like those shorts, right? S- similar. God, I'm t- because I wasn't raised a movie guy, the movie shit never connects with me. My whole life, actually, I've been just being like, yeah, yeah, cool. Hell yeah. Yeah, I, I do that, too. That's my move. I, I, I've seen probably like 10 movies in my life. I'm not so. doing it with you, Rip. I didn't connect with the dodgeball one, and I was going to do it. I said, you know what? It doesn't connect with me, bro. Fucking never don't remember it. But no, I'm like, sure it's just, a good scene, man. I'm, just nod your head and, and fake a smile, and, and you're good. Uh, fake a It's my one-star moment of the week is this podcast, bro. No, I'm just what's kidding. Your, what's your real one-star moment of the week? I know you got a bunch out there. It's actually kind of embarrassing. My wife did this to me. My wife put me in a predicament. Found a really good poke place that I love. It's called uh, it's called Kawhi Poke Company. And uh, I just put their name out there. So hopefully the guy that I'm going to tell the story about is gives me, offers me forgiveness because uh, I did not know for the for the, I does not know how it operates. Anyway, great poke place. It's at a golf course that I golf at, uh, Poipu Country Club. We went on a nice little hike, the Manu Aleppo Heritage Trail. It's in Poipu. It's a cool hike. It's right on the coast. What's cool about it, too, is actually really pushes you because a lot of it's sand. So it's like Steph Curry in the offseason running up the mountain, that type of thing in a hike. So you get tired. So we can walk, though, to this Poke Place afterwards. Poke Place has a bunch of mixed plates and some other offerings, but they do not offer chicken tenders as an adult meal offering. However, chicken tenders is available on the Kiki menu, the kids menu. As you know, Rep, you're always looking for the chicken tenders or the quesadilla. So we say, you know, I don't want to get too much poke. So I said, we'll get a poke bowl. And then what do you want? She says she wants chicken tenders. So I get the kids chicken tenders for her. We're going to do a little split after the hike. Post hike split, one unhealthy, one semi-healthy. All good in the hood. Guy comes to, to drop off the food, automatically drops the chicken tenders on my wife's side. She's got a big smile on her face. He's looking for a kid, though, not a kid, but still very nice. He then says, do you want anything else? She says, can I get some ranch? Totally fair question. He says, we do not have we don't we don't have ranch here. Go about our day. Go about our meal. It was delicious. Dipped it in ketchup, dipped the tendies in ketchup. No harm, no foul. Poke was great. It's the best poke, actually. It might be the best poke 
Kawhi Poke Company. It might be the best Poke oh, I've had, period, since I've been here in laugh over the last three years. But of course, wifey looks over her shoulder like she's about to do a pickoff play on Rip's Little League team, stealing bases. Same dude. Two sides of ranch going to another table. Ooh. So we think, well, we let it go. We just let it go completely, whatever, though. But I take it back home, and I, I, I really think that it's because they felt like I ordered off the kids' menu for two adults. They were not going to offer us additional benefits for being a guest in their restaurant. Wow. You sure it wasn't blue cheese they put on the other table? That's what I was saying. I said, maybe it's a tartar sauce or a different thing. We didn't examine it enough. I didn't get to put on my full detective costume, like like a Bones episode, and really get to get into it as much. Or was it because you guys are, are Howleys, and was the next table that got the ranch Native Hawaiians? Possib- nope. I, hard to tell. Very hard to tell. But we were also in uh, hiking clothes and sweaty. So perhaps we just looked disheveled, and they just didn't want to offer the additional sustenance of a ranch dressing. So, you know, I'm putting it on my list, not red flagged, yellow flagged. The poke is too good for me to red, red flag it. And actually, shit, the chicken tenders are damn good, too. Hard to find good chicken tenders. People think it's all fun and games with chicken tenders. It's very rare to find a good one. A lot of mediocre chicken tenders out there. This is a very good one, too. So I don't know if I'm going to order off the kids menu when I'm there. I'm going to have to make it a to go order in the future. Or I made the executive decision. One star moment of the week. I'm just going to buy, I'm going to buy some ranch here at the house. I don't have any ranch. I'm going to buy some ranch and just solve all the problems forever. So that situation arises. I can say, you know what? Let's save two tenders and we'll take them home and we'll put them in the microwave a little bit later when we're watching some HBO and dip them in some ranch. Problem you solved. Could, you could bring your own ranch to the restaurant. It might be a five-star move right there, like a little pocket. Po- but yeah, you went on a hike. You're not going to carry it on the hike. That's it's not going to carry ranch. You have to carry ranch in your car, which is next level shit, <laughs> Riv. Actually, I mean, you can do it with the uh, somehow, some way that fast food ranch seems sustainable without refrigeration, which is crazy. Those little, mm-hmm. those little box packets of it like they, they i never thought about it till now yeah how are those not need refrigeration but the stuff in the bottle does always have them in your glove compartment that's the moral of this story DK. fuck that is the moral we just ice people up next time you go through chick-fil-a order because they don't say no to you at chick-fil-a it's part of the golden rule the golden rule when you get hired there they tell you they say don't ever if somebody wants 20 sauces you fucking give them 20 sauces so Get yourself some sauces at Chick Fil A. Put them in your center thing. Be a hero in your relationship with your kids or your wife. Sounds like a recommendation of the week for me. I just doubled down, bro. I doubled down on this terrible podcast. Um, a recommendation and a moment. But I don't know if I'm gonna order off the kids menu in person anymore. I always feel bad doing it anyway. Oh, my wife does it all the time, man. I mean, if that's if that's what you want, you should be able to do it. Just, just throw. It feels like I'm taking advantage bucks. of the restaurant, though. Like, you know, no, nah, just throw a couple extra bucks in the tip, man. That's all. It evens out in the end. I think it's done for the restaurant too. If you have stuff on the kids menu, not on the adult menu, put a scoop of coleslaw on it, charge double the price, and do a, or or do a do a chicken tenders appetizer menu for the adults. There you go. Should consult these places. What do you got? What do you got? You got a one star moment. I'm proud yeah. of us. We haven't done any, uh, nobody's done any shitting or poo talking about probably six months. I think we're evolving as humans. Yeah, none of that uh, recently, thankfully. Uh, the holidays are coming up, though, so you never know. But I, I channeled my uh, my 25-year-old self this weekend. I, I got some friends together, some of my friends here in Long Beach, about four of us. And I invited them all to this homebrew festival. It's like basically like a beer fest for homebrewers at this uh this this house over in long beach it's kind of like 30 home brewers just setting up giving samples out and then you vote at the end on the ones you think are the best so basically one of those beer fests that people go to and you know so i mean we got we got like the hardcore people wearing like a necklace full of uh like mini pretzels so like to clear their palate in between tastes like these guys are all over the place they probably go to these things every weekend they're professionals uh myself exact opposite i was just there to drink and dk it didn't turn out well it was uh it was three and a half hours of of tasting beers just back to back to back so three and a half hours of straight drinking and you know you always hit that point where it catches up to you and you realize like whoa i probably drank too much and for me it was uh it was when i got home uh my wife was out to dinner with the kids i walked in the door immediately passed out on the couch this Mm -hmm. was 6 30 at night 
I got home, so passed out on the couch. Mm -hmm. They came in from dinner, woke me up. I went right back to the kids' room, went to bed, fell back asleep, and didn't wake up till like five in the morning. So I was the most I've drinking in years and years, DK, and and it all catches up with you. There, the the beer that won actually, it was an unbelievable beer. I I don't know the name of the brewery in Long Beach, so I can't shout out that, but it was a mojito beer, tasted exactly like a mojito, the perfect mm. amount of sweetness, but in a beer, it was fourteen percent alcohol, DK, fourteen percent. So I had probably six of those in like probably five minutes at one point during the thing but an unbelievable amount of beer i can't handle it anymore i probably never could handle it but just a one star move by me i passed out immediately it was it was it, it's day. not very one star you could have so many worse things you did not get the spins you got into your house do not throw up i think very successful bro very difficult at our age to drink how many you tried probably 30 beers you put into that into that liver of yours Bunch it's of a little, it's IPAs. a little small. It's a little small beer glass, probably like three or four ounces. I probably had like fifty of them. I don't know how many beers that. You don't have fifty. To, you think you did uh, fifty little three ounces? Oh yeah. How, so how many beers is that? One hundred and fifty ounces. That's like forty ounces. So eighty ounces, maybe one hundred twenty ounces, like three forties worth of beer. You think you had? It's a lot of beer, DK. Yeah, that's too much. But you should. I still think you should be very proud of yourself for not, basically, for not getting the spins and not throwing up. Huge I success. did. I did. I thank you. I did go. My go to move is I woke up in the middle of the night. I think it was like two in the morning and I took two ibuprofen and I felt amazing the next morning. So that that's always I think I had that was a recommendation of the mm. week for me before is middle of the night, two ibuprofen, zero hangover. Sipping those light ladies beers, those mojito beers. I used to like the they were always you always got put into a category of being like a weak, like a puss if you did it. But I always like the the zimas or the taquizas coming up remember those so those oh, are kind of yeah. like a a sweet sweet treat of a beer can't drink too much of those even that mojito beer that won we should have them on the podcast it's a, it's a good idea you can only have a couple of those though that's the thing you can't have it's not like you can't drink a, like a 12 pack of mojito no, it's beers too, too sweet to do that it's way too sweet and wait i mean 14 percent alcohol is like stronger than wine unbelievable uh, you're too sweet. What are you going to do for your step grandmama's 92nd birthday, man? You got to do something original that she remembers. Let's get her a podcast shirt. <laughs> I don't know if she'll remember that. Uh, Why? But... You should remember that. Get her some donuts and a podcast shirt. It'll be the mo- most, the biggest thing that's happened to her. All- she- nobody would expect it. Bring her Maybe. on the pod. <laughs> that would be awesome. Yeah, we should do that. We should get our parents have never listened to a pod. Our dads had never listened to a pod. We should bring them on the pod for their first first uh, sampling of it. That'd be a great idea. Mm. It's, I hate it. And that means usually that it's going to be great. So, you know, it's crazy about this podcast. The seven or eight things that I've hated the most or have not leaned into the most have paid the most dividends. So fuck it. Uncomfortable. Here we come. Quick recommendation of the week, by the way, if we want to close this out with the Rex of the week. Uh, I don't know if you officially gave yours or not, but you've been putting out some content, which has been amazing for our social media on your morning walks and hikes with that weight vest and everything. I love it. Not too many people are actually doing that. Just like less than a minute clips. And but I mean, we know you have some one star takes. You called for Joshua Kelly to have 100 rushing yards on Monday night. I think mm. he had like four, if that. So total one star takes. But my recommendation of the week is that listeners out there this is for you engage with these posts because we've been getting some comments you had a, you had a vote on your uh, pumpkin pie versus the lily koi cheesecake the other day that just had listeners on both sides of it we actually got some votes for lily koi but dk i mean these these are great videos i encourage you to do more of them and i encourage the listeners to engage with them because that that's uh it's all about engagement man and, and you're doing these you send them to me i post them pretty much right away so they're usually sports takes for that night I know you got some NBA stuff coming up, uh, some more NFL stuff. So look out for those uh, at One Star Recruits on Twitter, Instagram, TikTok. Keep them coming, DK. No, it was so kind, bro. It's really exercise accountability for me. And I told you I want to do some more content. So I'm doing this. I'm doing the exercise anyway. I'm really going to stick to this for, for the rest of the the year here, which is to run two miles, two miles three times a week and then try to lift some weights once to twice a week. Uh, I'm going to stay committed to it. Because I want to, I want to stay in good shape through the holidays, and I think listeners can do that too. Film yourself doing some exercising uh, throughout the week, and whatever comes to mind, throw it up there. It's the accountability of the exercise, and 
uh, why not throw some terrible things out there? Yeah, Josh Kelly didn't even, I don't even think he played. Eckler looked unbelievable. He's bouncing off the screen, doing everything. Why would you give it to Joshua Kelly? Why did I even think that? But hey, burned about 4,000 calories walking up and down that hill, running that damn path, man. So I'm going to keep him coming. I'm going to keep him coming on my run days, bro. That's my thing. So I, I'm going to do three a week. I'll keep him coming. Preferably when you're out of breath and uh, panting and uh, brings a little little action from your from your daily life out to the listeners and people enjoy seeing that stuff. Why don't you give us one next week when you're out maneuvering around your life, Rip? When you got moments to yourself, give us a thought. Hey, I'll, I'll definitely try it, man. It's We can't get any more one star than we are. But There's I'll a commitment. It. There's a commitment, folks. Rip hates it when I do this on the show here. Commitment there. You took the cold shower that one time and it was great for you, bro. You probably... You probably have some new cells that you sprouted from that day. You might grow some hair follicles because I'm, I'm 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 giving you new ideas for life. I'm also hoping that we can uh, line up a couple more guests for the rest of the year. But I have low expectations, you know, because we're gonna have a chill holiday season. You have you have great grandparents still alive, bro, to see. Okay, I'm trying to get down below twelve percent body fat. We have things to do. In the meantime. Next year is going to be big. Some changes coming, some travel opportunities showing their faces, some growth in the podcast, and some fun new things always coming, coming up our sleeve. So stay tuned. Give us five stars or don't. Give us the guest of your dreams text. You don't have to even do social. If you know us, text Rip and I. We know who you are. Let's get an update on your, your guest of your dreams because that list changes, you know, as you change a little bit. As we prepare for 2024, Rip, one love. Congratulations on 9-0. and Hopefully you can go 10-0. Is there a, a playoff? Are you going to have an opportunity for a championship? No playoffs in fall ball. Uh, only bragging rights and, and a pizza pizza party on Sunday afterward for the kids. So all fun, DK. Yeah, there you go. Little Caesars all day? No, it's a, a, a local place, District 4 Pizza. Shout out on Bellflower near the 405, just open in Long Beach. Really good stuff. District, District 4. District 4 Pizza. There you go. Paul and Berlin game. Go get yourself a pizza next time you're down there. We'll catch you guys next week. One love. See you next week.